Uh, I want to talk to you about something, okay? Is it okay that we talk? Okay. Then here's why we all say okay. You know, some things we say come so naturally that it's hard to believe there was ever a time when these words didn't exist. No, I'm not talking about lit or shook here. I'm talking about the simple yet timeless okay. Had you been around before 1839, for instance, you wouldn't have had a clue what it means because okay wasn't a thing yet. Okay, so before we get into the story behind the word, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell to join us on the bright side. Okay? Okay. Now, okay is easily one of the most widely used expressions around the world. It isn't confined to one region, language, or even purpose. You use it to show that you got the message, like when your boss says, hey, I need you to send me a copy of that report, and you reply, okay. Yet, yeah, if you think that something was just mediocre, you might say, hmm, the movie was okay. Plus, it's a universal attention drawer, as in, okay, let's get down to business. Okay has a long list of meanings and uses, but there are just as many, if not more, theories on where the word comes from. The first theory is purely linguistic. There are those who believe that OK comes from the Scots oak I, which translates to oh yes. Latin omnis correcta, meaning everything's correct. Finnish okia or correct. Greek ola kala, meaning everything's fine. The German expression oni correcten, or without correction. The Native American Choctaw phrase OK, which means it is so. Or the French, OK, meaning at dock. <laughs> what does that have to do with something being OK? Well, a ship that has arrived safely at dock is doing OK for sure. It might also come from the Haitian Creole OKs, which translates to the Ks in English. This is a port in Haiti known for its AOK -okay rum. Now, there have also been some explanations related to historical events. OK, as we know it today, could have come from freight agent Obadiah Kelly. He would sort of sign off on boxes and objects being transported by the train, writing his initials OK. Another famous person with the same initials was Old Keokuk, a Native American tribal chief of the Sac and Fox Nation. He signed his initials on treaties OK. OK is also short for the Observatory Q in London. The OK stamp given by this Royal Observatory in the late 19th century was an international symbol of the great quality meteorological instruments they tested there. And finally, there are some theories that OK comes from the time of the American Civil War. It could stand for Zero Killed, which is a great report after battle. Or perhaps it comes from the Orin Kendall biscuits that were popular with the soldiers. It wasn't until the 1960s, when one scientist gave the matter some really advanced research and found the true origins of OK. That man was Alan Walker Reed, an American linguist and English professor at Columbia University. He checked the linguistic theories, traced the history back as far as he could, and shared his findings in a series of articles published from 1963 to 1964. According to Dr. Lawrence R. Horn, professor of linguistics and philosophy at Yale, Reed's conclusion remains the most credible origin of the word OK. So, what was this groundbreaking discovery? The truth is that it all started with a newspaper joke in 1839. You see, newspapers in the 1830s were all about fancy and often satirical abbreviations. For example, there's ISBD, it shall be done, RTBS, remains to be seen, and SP, small potatoes. Just check out this elaborate one used in an 1839 New York newspaper report. OKKBWP stood for One Kind Kiss Before We Part. It was also a time when deliberate misspellings became popular. Let's see, there's KY for no use, <laughs> KG for no go, 
and OW for all right. And you thought the internet age came up with some cool abbreviations, SMA. Well, many of those quirky and purposely misspelled abbreviations didn't really live on. As for OK, it's Doc. But it first made its appearance on March 23, 1839, when a funny editorial came out in the Boston Morning Post. It was dedicated to an organization called the Anti-Bell Ringing Society that formed as a joke against the new ban on ringing dinner bells in the city. In the article, the editor writes the abbreviation OK to stand for All Correct. Now, at that time, it was very common to print All Correct in full when you wanted to get the point across that everything is in order. It was this article in particular, however, that gave it the abbreviation OK. The public loved the new expression, and so did the competition. By the end of the year, OK had shown up in newspapers across the East Coast. Like in the Boston Evening Transcript, the New York Evening Tattler, and the Philadelphia Gazette. However, what really helped OK to win worldwide popularity is the 1840 American presidential election. Martin Van Buren, the Democratic candidate, was nicknamed Old Kinderhook after his birthplace in Kinderhook, New York. His supporters formed the OK Club, and his slogan became OK. Things went pretty crazy, as they tend to do in presidential election campaigns. The opposing Republican Party started using OK in other contexts when speaking of the rival party. It now meant out of cash, out of character, orful catastrophe, or orfully confused. It was even used to make fun of Andrew Jackson, Van Buren's predecessor, for his poor spelling. This is probably why this totally harmless expression today made it into the slang dictionary of vulgar words in 1864. OK could have ended up as a one-campaign slogan and joke, but it got lucky again. The Telegraph was coming into use at that time, and this handy abbreviation gained even more popularity. By the 1870s, telegraph operators were using it as standard response to indicate receiving a transmission. Pop culture also started making use of the expression. Rodgers and Hammerstein played with it in their 1943 musical Oklahoma, declaring that the state was OK. The I'm OK, You're OK book, published by Thomas Harris in 1967, became one of the most popular self-help guides ever. Even though now we know the scientifically approved theory of OK's origins, it's still pretty cool that there are so many other theories around. This is what makes OK truly a people's expression. The number of languages and countries that have claimed their decisive role in its creation only proves its popularity and importance for the whole world. And who knows? Maybe a couple of centuries from now, linguists of the future will try to trace the origins of LOL or YOLO. So, what abbreviation do you use the most? Tell us in the comments below. Don't forget to give this video a like, share it with your friends, and click subscribe to stay on the bright side of life. Okay?